H T okay repeat ten something P U pen up right random 360 great f d random 80 okay now what's the um what's the size of the screen the length of the screen it's like 145 or so on each side right so you could do random 300, but that's all right. Random 80 is fine. Yeah, we haven't done variables yet. Wait 10. Okay. Pen down. And then another repeat here. Okay. forward 44 forward negative 44 right after the other okay oh to draw the line with the pen down okay because there's a pen right Twenty four. Close the bracket. Close the close the loop. We'll say we'll start using the great. Clear graph. Close, close the outer loop. Show turtle. Okay. All right. All right, can we see what it looks like? Ah, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and run it again. We'll get on camera. Great. So this, um, I kind of did something a little bit more elaborate. Just hit the, and and I saved it, and I'll show you how to save it. Um, just type uh, the word fireworks there. Yeah, and then just hit enter. So I kind of went a little overboard. 
<laughs> I made a, a city line there. And I used uh, the set background, which I, I haven't shown you. Let's see. What do you have? You have high turtle, repeat 10. So the repeat 10, that's going to refer to your fireworks, right? Um, so that's the number of fireworks. Of. Is that 10? And then we have pen up. Uh, so let's say we have a screen. Pen up, hide turtle. And then I did write random 360. Well, yeah, that's fine. Which picks a random number between I think 0 and 359, or 1 and 360, I'm not sure. Right random 360, forward random 400. Forward. Okay, the reason I did 400 is because I think the screen itself is like negative 195 to 195. So that's about 200 on each side. So 400 will get you someplace there uh, throughout the whole screen. <coughs> That's the reason I chose that. Maybe it's 165. I don't remember. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And then I did pen down. So we pick some random spot on the screen. Pen down. Then what I did was set color 3 plus random 10. Set C three plus random ten. So random ten will pick a number zero to ten. And then I added three because set color two is black and that would um clash with the background. So if it ended up being if random ten ended up being two, then you just add three to it to get it above two. So that would end up being set color five. But if random 10 ended up being zero, then if we add three, then at least we get past two. So I would end up at least at three. So if I did two plus random 10, zero plus two could end up being the black color and you wouldn't actually see the firework. And I just figured that out going through the engineering of it, testing it out. So there's not really anything, you know, mathematically special with this with regard to the actual firework. I'm just making sure we don't get a black firework. <laughs> Repeat random 20. Okay. Now this random 20, what I decided was I was going to show the show multiple times. So this here is the fireworks show. How many times are we actually going to show the show? <coughs> it's just the way I decided to do it. Let's see. So we'll put... The... Fireworks show over there. I don't know if you can see that. Well, yeah, the fireworks show. Everything that goes goes in here is the show. So the first thing we're going to do for the show is, and we'll show the show a random number of times. I think it must have been on twenty when we <laughs> when I showed you because it kept going over and over and over. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, take the pen up. Uh, 
and up and my red marker is kind of going to need a new red marker actually I'm not going to use a red right now I'm going to use a uh, well yeah I'll use a red if we have it oh, out of red yeah I got another red in here darker red we'll take the pen up um, clear the graphics and then we'll go pen down because I think when you clear the graphics it puts the turtle home but it creates this like line from wherever the turtle was and I don't I didn't want to see that line when it go when it brings the turtle home so that's why I do pen up clear graphics pen down yes so there's a home inside of the clear graphic Ah, okay. Now I'm going to repeat random 20. This is inside the show. Okay, so inside the show, this... 20, that's the number of fireworks. This 20 is the number of shows, the outer 20, that we're actually going to display. We'll reset and do another fireworks display. This is the number of fireworks within the show, so that each show will have a different number of fireworks. Presumably. It's possible all 20 could have the same. But So this is the... Number of fireworks. And these are called nested repeats or nested loops. When you put one loop inside the other, it's called nested. Okay. So, um, then what I did now we have the show. So, for the show <coughs> we're going to take the pen up I'm just putting this on the same line as the bracket to save space. We're going to go right random 360 You also did this so you know what's going on. Uh, forward random 400. That's going to put the turtle in some random spot in the screen. And then we'll do our pen down because we're ready to make our firework. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to do something a little fancy. Um, I decided I wanted the fireworks to get bigger and more grand as they go. So you're going to start out with a firework that looks like that. Then you'll have another fireworks that looks like that. Then you'll have another firework with more spokes and gets a little longer like that. So we're going to have more spokes and get longer. So how do we do that? So we need to have some variable that's going to increment. But I haven't shown you the variables yet. So I use the color. So I say repeat color. So we don't actually know what color is. Because the set color was a random 10. So it could start with like five so this would be repeat five does that make sense 
Well, so this is set color. So we're setting color to some number. We don't know what that number is. It's random. So that's a random number. But we know it's going to be between 3 and 13. Does that make sense? So this creates a random number between, you know, let's, let's say 1 and 10. And then when we add 3, or 0 and 9, then we add 3 to 1 and 10 is going to be between 3 and 12. So that's going to set color, which changes that variable. So let's think of it as we have a box over here. Color is a system variable, so we can use it. We haven't, I haven't shown you user-defined variables yet, but they have system variables. Did we, did we look at color last time? Yeah, so just type show color on your screen and it'll come up with some number. One. All right, so that's like white. <laughs> so, but set color will change that. So do set color random 10. So it just turned color to six, right? So by setting color, let's say this box is called color. Right now we've got a six in there because we did set color. So now repeat color. It's going to go and look up this box color. What's in there? Oh, six. So this is repeat six. So we don't know what it's going to repeat. It's random. It's going to repeat something. It's going to replace this variable with the number. <clears throat> so this repeat is the number of spokes in the firework. number of spokes we'll call it a spoke like of a wheel how many spokes we're gonna do so we're gonna have six spokes one two three four five six right so what's the angle that we have to turn here how do we determine the angle and what I'm doing here right here if we have six spokes what's the angle Right, so if the number of spokes is color, what would the equation be? We turn right, 360 divided by what? Color, because we don't know what this is going to be. It's a variable. Yeah, so the angle is 360 divided by color, which gets evaluated, but we just don't know. We don't know. So. Uh, here, now we have to actually create the spoke, right? So you did forward 44, back 44. Now, to me, I just made a repeat because you're doing the same thing, right? So um, so what I did was to create the spoke, I did <laughs> repeat two y2 two? because I have to go out and then back I'm doing the same thing twice I'm just going in a different direction yeah uh, your way is perfectly fine I mean I'm kind of this may be even overdoing it it's more sophisticated that's right so forward now I I want my I want the spokes to start out small and then the more fireworks we make the bigger the spokes get how can I do that do we have a number that's getting bigger each time color yeah exactly let's just do color for now and then we'll yeah we'll plus it over there so we'll go forward six or a color in this case. This blue is going, all my markers go at the same time. <clears throat> I didn't expect you to come up with something sophisticated. What you came up with is exactly right. That's perfect. Forward color. I'm just saying here's how we can elaborate on it. Okay, and then we turn right. How much do we turn right? Well, we went out. Now we got to go back. So how much do we turn right? Right. 
How about 360 divided by 2? Because we're only making two lines. 1, 2. 180. Does that make sense? I mean, I think you did the same thing, right? Like, um, oh, no, you just did, you just did um, <coughs> forward 44, forward negative 44. But instead of doing negative, I'm actually doing the turn. So it's got to be 180. So that's actually a, a constant, not a variable. But it's the same thing. This is your forward 44, forward negative 44. That's my repeat to. So there's two different ways to skin a cat. Repeat to, forward, turn 180, come back. <coughs> and then we're going to turn right. Right? How much are we going to turn right now? Because this is creating the spoke. So we've created our spoke. Now we need to turn right that angle and do it again. So how much do we turn right? We already determined that. 360 divided by color. Yeah. Yeah, I know you know. 360 divided by color. And that's going to get us our angle every single time. So right, 360, and then uh, looks like we're done there. Let's just pull this guy up. This is green. Okay. And then this here is the spoke. So we kind of have to keep track of this because we have a repeat. How many repeats do we have? We have a lot of nested repeats. Repeat, 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 repeat. First repeat is the five. Well, let's go here. This repeat is the single spoke. This repeat is the number of spokes. This repeat is the single firework. Uh, I'm sorry, the number of fireworks. So this is the single firework. This is the number of fireworks. And this is the number of fireworks shows we're going to do. So we have a lot of nested repeats. Then after that, I um, can't remember why I put pen down here, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Uh, what color are we in? We're in green. We're back in green land. So we're going to do <coughs> pen down. And then like you said, set color to what? The next color, right? Because we want the spoke to just get a little bit longer each time. Set color to color plus one. Actually, I like writing one plus color. <coughs> and in some languages, you might have to put the parentheses there. Otherwise, what it will do, if you don't have the parentheses, it will set color to one that might evaluate as true and then you do something like true plus color so your order of precedence might be out of order but in this language you don't have to put the parentheses right there pen down set color to one plus color and that's going to get you what instead of six we're going to add one to that number and what's going to be in this box here seven so this is called a trace when we go through and we change these variables, we're tracing through the code. This is our trace. Now we're done with that, so we're going to close off that. Okay, I'll pull this up a little bit so I have some space here. We're just going through the code on the whiteboard to see what's happening and we're changing the variables as we go through it. We're tracing through the code like if you're tracing a piece of paper. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. And now, um, okay, what I did here that's a random 20 was, uh, so this is the number of fireworks. Okay, so I um, after we make 20 fireworks no, wait. Yeah, that's the show. So this is the sh the fireworks show. This is the number of fireworks. This is the actual show here. 
Yeah. So after the fireworks show, this is the number of fireworks shows. The number of fireworks shows. And this is the show. So after the show, I'm going to set the background color, boom, to a different color. So I want to create some like flash of light, right? So we're going to set the background color. I didn't show you this last week, but you can do set BG. <coughs> yes. Set BG. To the color. So we're going to take the color of the last firework and just use that. And then we'll wait to <coughs> wait a little bit. Otherwise it goes too fast and you can't see it. <coughs> and then set BG zero. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> now, why didn't I do set B? I could have done set BG to random something or other. I could have done that, but I just use less code. Just figure use the last. And so what that gets us. <clears throat> So now I did draw another line in here that says draw the city line. And then I, I just, you know, made a couple of boxes. I basically made a square and then a rectangle. And then I repeated that, you know, like five times. And that's all I did. So that's just like make a square, make a rectangle, put that inside of a repeat. And that's your city line. So I'm redrawing the city line down here. Um, don't worry about that. And then what you end up with is different fireworks shows. So we'll do it again because it's fun to watch. So you can see they start out small and then they get bigger. So they start out really small. And then at the end of the show, you get that flash of lightning. And so there were there weren't that many shows because it was, you know, the first original random 20. So how did I make it so I could just type that fireworks right there? Let's go over that. So that's nested repeats. And what I did to create this was I didn't start from the outer one. I started from the spoke and then I worked outward for each repeat. Because starting from the, the first repeat is difficult. So I just start from the basic. That's probably what you did too. You just made a line and come back, I imagine. Yeah, we usually start with the inner repeats. That was nested repeats. Now let's look at abstraction. So let's define abstraction. And you can also call this black box. method abstraction means creating functions it means you take a whole big slew of code and you put it in a black box so that you no longer have to think about it so we'll say encapsulate code in a function, and remember everything in computers that you're going to write is either a function or a variable, a constant, encapsulate code in a function so you do not have to think about it, about the code. 
you don't want to have to re write repeat four forward 50 right 90 every time you want to write a square you just want to write the word square to think about the code that's the that's the definition there so we're gonna we're gonna write some lines of code and then to to make a square forward 50 right 90 forward 50 right 90 forward 50 right 90 forward 50 right 90 well we don't want to have to write that every single time we want to square so we're just going to take all of that put it in a function and call it square and then now I no longer have to write all of this every time I run and write a square I just write the word square so we call this the black box because you're not gonna look at this code anymore you no longer need to look at it assuming it's right if there's something wrong with it then you have to go debug it you have to go trace through it but that's your black box square and I used a black box called city line which draws a city line every time because I make the fireworks over my city line to so to reset the fireworks I have to clear graphics I also have to clear the city line so I have to redraw the city line so I made a function wrote some lines of code we'll turn it into a black box and we'll call that city line <coughs> and then I made another function okay made a black box there and that function was called fireworks okay now inside city line I might have other black boxes like I might call a function called square <laughs> right and I might call a function called rectangle so I got these two functions inside this black box this black box inside this one and so we're we're nesting functions now we're building functions upon functions upon functions so let's just start with square let's show you how to get to the area where you can write some code and define a function now in all the other programming languages you would just call it the code <laughs> you say let's go to the code sometimes you have something called an IDE I prefer just using I prefer just writing code I don't do much with IDEs but integrated development environment We're not going to use this word, but you have to know what it means when you go out there in the world and program. I-N-T-E. Integrated. And, and development. Environment. Okay. And they take the I and the D and the E and they just call it the I-D what that means is that you've got some piece of software it's basically a souped up notepad <laughs> so you've got a notepad here where you can draw your code and then when you draw when you define a function all of a sudden that function ends up over here in the left and you can hover your mouse over there and they'll take you to that function then all your functions get built over here and you put them in a module a code module and you have your different code modules and you have your code modules up here and it's just a way of navigating this like souped up notepad like if you took your car and you turned it into a race car you souped it up with the bigger engine and turbo and all this kind of stuff that's what it is it's like notepad but you're 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 making it so that every time you define a function and a module and a bigger program larger pro it goes over here and then this sidebar stays the same and you can hover your mouse over here and go to different places fairly quickly 
where you can learn all the commands so that you're very fast. And that's your IDE, your Integrated Development Environment. I work on Linux. I use one called Sublime. I love it, although I don't really do too much with it other than just, you know, use it as a fancy notepad. But it is, it is incredible, Sublime. So that's the one I use, but there's lots of, lots of them. So that's your integrated development environment. We don't have an integrated development environment for Logo Writer. What we have is something called the flip side. And what that means is if you take a book, okay, and you take a sheet of paper and you flip it over so that you can write on the back of the paper, and then you turn it over and you can draw on the front of the paper, that's what the flip side is. It's your integrated development environment. So in Logo Writer, version 2.0 which is what you're we're, we're using from you know like 50 years ago we have it's called the flip side that's your integrated development environment the flip side and you get to it with I'll tell you the secret control F that will flip the page Now, I, on your logo writer, I don't know how. You'll have to look up in the manual and see how to get to the flip side or how to access the code. You probably maybe already done that. <coughs> so, what do we get? Go ahead and hit Control F. Okay, now it says flip side. Great. And now the cursor is up here. So how do we define a function? There's a function that you use to define a function. The function has two parts. It's basically like an open bracket and a closed bracket. So we'll just pretend it's an open bracket and a closed bracket. But instead of writing the open bracket, we're going to write... The word two. And then we're going to write the name of our function. Two name. And then down here, we're immediately going to write end. Never start writing the function without writing the word, without writing the closed bracket. But we're not going to write a closed bracket. We're going to write the word end. And that defines your function. The two is the open bracket, and the end is the closed bracket. On the next line. Or you can just hit, tick, 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 like, return, return, return. I like to put it in all caps, because this isn't case sensitive. So I would put the all caps on. To square. Let's make square. S Q U A R E. Boom. How do we make square? Well, there's two ways. Forward 50, right 90. Forward 50, right 90. Forward 50, right 90. Forward 50, right 90. Let's use the repeat. <laughs> repeat. Repeat for open bracket, close bracket. Okay? And so what I'm always doing when I program is I'm writing to end and then return, return, return. Create some space. Repeat for open bracket, close bracket, return, return, return. And I, I, I'm, I'm always like wedging in more space, but you always have to write the close bracket. If you decide to just start typing lines of code, and you didn't write that close bracket, well, ultimately, you're going to have another repeat and then another repeat. And if you try and back up and figure, uh, where, where, how many brackets do I have? I don't, it's going to be impossible. So you always write the open and the close bracket together, always, when you're defining your functions and when you're defining your, your, your repeats or any what we call a, a, a clause of code. So just write bracket, bracket. Now, we'll go 
I'm going to use a different color because we're inside the bracket. Forward 50, right 90. Okay. This repeat will be what are we doing inside the repeat? That's just one side of the square. One side of square. And then this is four sides. So we're already encapsulating. The repeat itself is an encapsulation, is an abstraction. Well, it's an encapsulation. So now what we've done is we've defined a function. And if you've defined it correctly, we can go back to the flip side and just type square. So this right here is your black box. That's your black box. We no longer have to think about how to, to define a square. Square. Now, eventually we'll put some inputs here and get some output. Right now we're just going to get the output. <coughs> we, we don't have any inputs. And so when you have a function with no inputs, it's called a procedure. But I don't particularly care for that word, so I just say function. Because <coughs> why have two words when you can just have one? I guess they say, well, but when you use the word procedure, it means there's no inputs. Blah, blah, blah. It's a function. So, square. <coughs> Or when it does something on the screen, they call it a procedure. So now you just type, go to the, go back to the flip side, go to the front side, just type the word square in the command center. And the turtle will draw a square. And you want to indent this. You definitely want to, at least for now, it's usually a tab in your integrated development environments. But um, indent it one space now so that you can see where you are. Otherwise, it will be impossible to code. Oh, you can just indent by one space. Use the space bar. Yeah. When you use like kind of a modern programming language, you'll indent using the space. Yeah, I know it's kind of, yeah. Right, and that tells you that the brackets line up with that repeat. Yeah, that's it. And so uh, go to the flip side, control F. Okay. Now you can just type, uh, um, so now you can save your fireworks program. Just type square. Yeah, and now do, you know, repeat. Uh, now, the cool thing about the encapsulation is let's say we do repeat um, 36. You start to see the power of defining your own user-defined functions. And th so these are user-defined functions, meaning you're the user, and you're defining them on the flip side. If the, the logo writer-defined functions are called keywords, or logo writer actually calls them primitives, but they're, they're called keywords in another programming language, the ones that come with the language. And so we'll write repeat. Uh, let's say 36. Let's say we want to draw 36 squares. Now we can just write, because we've defined it, square, and then write, um, since we have 36, we'll just go write 10, because 10 times 36 is 360. This is really 360 divided by 36. Write 10. Oh, we're done. And that's a whole lot simpler. Yeah. All right. Good. So now you can put your fireworks in the uh, flip side. So let's do a couple more things with this. So let's go to the flip side. Let's write Pentagon. Let's write Pentagon. Two. Pentagon. And then we're immediately going to write end. We're going to indent. We'll indent by one space here. In the other language, it'll be a tab. Now, how do we write a pentagon? It's five sides instead of four. So you can do that. You're a pro at that. Now, what do we write? Repeat five.
forward some number. We're going to turn right. Well, what's 360 divided by 5? That's for smart people. Let's see. Divided by 5. 72. Right? 72. Or you could just say 360 divided by 5. Two Pentagon. Congratulations. You can go to the flip side now. Draw your Pentagon. Good. Now, go up to that, um, change the square to pentagon, and have fun with that. Go up one line, and change that square to a pentagon. Not that one, the one below it. There, inside the repeat. Get a slightly different design, don't we? All right, one more, let's do a hexagon. End. You can just keep it all in caps all the time, but that's okay. And 360 divided by 6 equals 60. And you can indent the forward and the right so that you can see what you're doing. Go back to the flip side for a moment and indent that. Another space, yeah, because it's inside the brackets. Okay, now I'll make a hexagon. Now you notice they're getting bigger and bigger. The area of the polygon is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, go ahead and you can put a hexagon in there. Repeat the hexagon. So we want to make the length smaller and smaller. Yeah. So if we want to make the length smaller and smaller, we're going to use a, uh, a variable. This right here, this length, this forward right here. We want to be able to control that number. Now use color earlier because I could change color that was a system defined variable but now we're gonna have to have a user defined variable and the way we do that is we're gonna use um well here's here's the uh, here's the situation let's say I'm gonna put an instruction on the board and I want you to follow the instruction go ahead Right, so that's your name. Now, I'm going to put another instruction on the board, and I want you to follow that instruction. Your name, right. So the first one, I'm going to say Johnny. The second one, I'm going to say your name. So what happened? The difference is with quotes, we basically have like the name of the variable, right? Remember we had... So this would be color. So in the quotes, we would say color. But the color was six. On the first one here, we're going to do something called evaluation. And that has the word value in it, which means we're going to go get the value. We're going to say, OK, your name, that's the color. Uh, we're going to go get that value in that box, six. So we're going to evaluate. So when we say repeat and then forward 
it evaluates forward. It says, what does this mean? The computer, that's a black box. That has, let's go get into that function. That's a function. Let's turn this into a function and evaluate it. But if we say to square length, and we add a parameter there, and then we do repeat for forward length right 90. Now I've added a variable here. And when you have a variable that's applied to a function, it's called an argument. And once you give it the number, that's a parameter. Argument, parameter, variable, constant, they're all the same thing. The problem is forward is a function. Length, it's going to get evaluated. Logo Writer is going to think that's a function. And it's going to go look for a black box function called length. But there isn't one. We haven't, we haven't defined one. We haven't gone to length, right? And we haven't done that. There is no function called length. So what we have to do is we have to put that quote here, which says, now, you say, well, shouldn't we have a quote on the other side? Yeah, technically, but it, Logo Writer doesn't do that. So if you want to create a variable, you have to use the quote so that we're not going to evaluate it right now. But here we want to evaluate it. So we have a variable. It's like a box called length. And we have some number in it. Let's say 6. Well, you know, 50. Now, if we want to look inside and get that, we don't want to evaluate this as a function, but we do want to evaluate, we want to look inside and evaluate, see the value of it. And so we're going to put a colon before it. And that colon is going to be like, think of that as two eyes looking at the value. That's the what we call the syntax. Syntax means your grammar. Syntax is the grammar of your programming language. So go ahead and write that on the flip side. Is that how you spell grammar? Yeah. <laughs> grammar. Syntax. So go on the flip side. Yeah, now actually you've already defined square, so you can't define it again. So you probably want to go back up to where you have square and just add length at the beginning of your flip side. Oh, but you need to delete the one you just defined. Yeah. And the end as well. Now to just type the length. Yeah. With a quote. Yeah. Yeah. And then forward forty four, change that to forward length. But use the colon instead of the quote. That's gonna evaluate. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll keep it uh, all caps because you've got the capital there on the length. Yeah, for logo writer, just use all caps all the time. Okay, now go to the flip side and type. Uh, go up to square and hit enter. Now it says square needs more inputs, so give it a length, square 50. And that's your parameter. Might have to put the pen down. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe it's black. Try to set color random 10 above it.
Just hit the up arrow. Uh, go go back to the uh, go to your code. Oh, forward. Yeah, repeat forward. Ah, that should work. I don't know why it's not working. Oh yeah, yeah. Get rid of that for sure. There you go. <laughs> okay, good. So the question then becomes: We don't want to keep having to write square. Pentagon, hexagon, octagon, decagon. We just want to write polygon. So what can we do here? Two polygon. We'll just write poly. What do we need here? What's the second variable we need? Sides. Right. And then you're just going to do what? Instead of going right 90, you're going to go right what? How do you term determine that angle? 360 divided by sides. Now you can choose. You, you, you don't have to write pentagon, hexagon. You got as many sides as you want. You just input the length and the sides and you're done. I'd actually reverse some sides and length. So, all right, good. So play with that, make the polygon and then start making, uh, uh, if you want, add a city line to your uh, fireworks. What happened? Put your fireworks on the flip side. Put the city work, city on the flip side, and use functions for these things. Make the polygon. And then just start playing and having fun. All right, very good. That's abstraction. That's nested loops and abstraction.